Good morning. Welcome to this time of worship. Are we live, Pastor? I didn't think so. We are fortunately alive, though. So that's always good. It's always good to be alive. Well, welcome. Uh... <laughs> Welcome for those of you here and now live via the internet and who will be watching later on via YouTube. We welcome you. Um, please take time to fill out the communication and the prayer request form. It's in your bulletin, especially if any contact information has changed, please fill that out and you can put it in the um, box in the narthex. Uh, anybody here who is, um, everyone here is welcome to make use of the family worship room just outside the sanctuary. Uh, the service is broadcast there. Announcements, um, pretty much the usuals. Uh, men's breakfast is next Saturday, correct? The 18th. Today's the 12th and you add, yeah. Um, so that's at Southern Bell's Pancake House next Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, we have Bible class meets uh, 9.30 on Sundays and 7 p.m. Tuesday nights. Family prayer time is 6.30 the third Thursday of the month. And virtual communion is um, held virtually the first Sunday night uh, at 7 p.m. via Facebook. We also have a quilt in the East Room to tie, tie knots and say a prayer for Tom Hernandez. He's a communications person. I don't know his exact title. I apologize. But he's a communications person for um, Plainfield School District. And um, he could use some prayers right now. So we hope that he continues to heal as well as he is so far. Any other announcements this morning? Really? None at all, huh? Okay. Stay tuned for a date for Church in the Woods. I believe it'll be in August, uh, but we'll get you that information as soon as we have it finalized. All right, we will go to our scripture, which is Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 14. Ask, and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, no much more will, be get, will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him. In everything to do others as you would have them do to you. And this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gates, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it, for the gate is narrow, and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Thank you, Robert. We have a, some substitutions today. Stella's playing, and Bob is his lay leading. So, praise the Lord, we're uh, in, in good shape today. We've got people to cover everything. And praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory to the Lamb of God, Sam Erconin is back. And if you take a real quick glance around, you'll get to see that a gentleman named Paul Fay is back with us. He walked into my office this morning and I almost passed out. Stella says, look, and I went, if you can, would you stand with me as we pray together today? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this awesome day that you've given to us. 
Father, we thank you for the gift of life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you for the power and presence of your Holy Spirit in our lives. And God, we thank you for Paul being here with us. And God, knowing what he's been through and some of the things that he faces still, Lord, we lift him up to you, asking your healing hand to be upon him and your wisdom to be with his doctors and all the caregivers that he has. And Father, we pray that every need that he has will be met as we pray for the needs of our body here of Christ, that you would meet our needs. We pray for those that need a touch of your healing hand, whether it be physical or whether it be some emotional thing or maybe it be things like PTSD, anxiety, or fear. We pray, God, by the blood of Jesus and the stripes that he received on the cross, our healing is in him. So God, today we ask you to be in our service, to bless and anoint us and keep us, Father, in the very presence of your will. And our God, we pray that you, and you alone, would be glorified. As we pray together, all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Page 30, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. you notice I stumbled on the second verse? We only sing the first verse half the time. But uh, it's good to sing that second verse because the hosts of the angels sing God's praises also. And you know, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God, my Lord and my Redeemer. You know, what comes out of our mouth, and you'll hear this in a little bit, is life, or death, how we speak, what we say. It's life or death. So let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Do we have any prayer requests today? Patty? Um, the lady who had given her name was Mary Eckenrich. She wrote you a letter. Mm -hmm. um, Your surgery is tomorrow? Any others? Sam? Did you have your hand? Okay. John? Continue healing for Paul Hill. 
Yes, he is. He's here. Ada? Yes, we know she had a very rough start. Are there any others? Joyce. Your child turned 65? Barb, right? Janet. Have you read my sermon for today? <laughs> Are there any others? Now that my wife's back there, I better turn around and check, right? My, my first wife. I only have two here today. Let's go to prayer. Father, we thank you for this day and time of prayer. Father, the time is every moment of every day. And God, as we pray, we, we lift up to you these requests. For the family of Mary who passed, Lord, on Friday, we pray, Father, for your comfort as you lead them through the valley of the shadow of death. For the McDonald family, for Neil's passing, God, we pray that you would be with them, give them comfort and peace. And God, we thank you for the testimony of of Neil, Lord, that just a strong man who said to his wife at the last, I'm ready, I'm ready. And God, we pray that all of us can be in that frame of mind to be ready. Father, we lift up to you, Patty, for her surgery tomorrow. We pray that the success would be incredibly phenomenal. And God, that you would receive all the glory and the honor. We continue to pray for Paul, and we thank you that he's here today. And God, we pray that he just doesn't overtax himself. But God, we know that getting out of the place where he's staying is probably enough energy to keep him going for a week, I hope. And God, we thank you for him. and Pray, God, your hand upon him and all of his life. We pray for Maisie and thank you for her amazing five years. And God, we, we just pray that you would continue to keep her safe. And Lord, all the surgeries that that little baby's been through, that God, you just keep your hand on her and keep her safe. We pray for strength and uh, for Janet and the transitions in her life. And God, I pray for all of us here today that we can accept your will over ours, that we can decree and declare we trust you so much that we can say thy will be done. And God, for all of our families here, may the hand of your precious Holy Spirit be with each and every one. And God, again, for this service, may you be honored and glorified. In the powerful and holy name of Christ, our Redeemer, and everyone said. Amen. And well, let's just turn to page 10 and sing, we will glorify. No, Father, we glorify your name. Page 10.
as you notice, in the time of, in the, uh, the bulletin, you have a title and you have a scripture. And the title is, you know, you can find the fullness of life. How many of you have found the fullness of life? If, if I were to poll this congregation right now and say, do me a favor and raise your hands if you're living life to its fullest, how many could raise your hand? Good girl. Way to go. I want to I read to you part of the scripture that we had for this morning. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who, who find it. Many misinterpret this verse. Many say that broad is the path and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And everybody interprets this verse to say there are many people that are going to hell and few people that are going to heaven. You know what I got to say about that? Read carefully. Stop reading what somebody told you it says and read it. As many are who find life. You see, if we read it again, we see that heaven is never mentioned in this packet, in this passage. Jesus was talking about life. Wow. Few people enjoy the fullness and blessing in life that God intends. What did John 10:10 10, 10 tell us? The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Well, we know that. We know that's the devil's job. What a job description he has. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. But look what, look what Jesus has said he's, he's doing. I am come that you have life. Here's that word again. That you have life and that you have it. In the, in the one verse, virgin, that, that I pulled out, it says, and may have, it says, I have come that men may have life and may have it in all its fullness. How many of you have a bucket list? How many of you know you're not going to complete your bucket list? Why not? Uh, we subscribe to Pure Flix. And there, there's, there's a, a movie on there. I can't even remember its name, and I've only watched the trailer. But this, this street child, some girl finds and says, what's your name? And he says, Nathaniel. And he, she says, why are you here? He says, well, because I don't have any place else to go. And she asked him this question. Strange to ask somebody living on the street this question. But what, is your, what would you like to be? I'd like to be a doctor and go back to my, my homeland and be a doctor there. She says, oh, let's work on it. He says, not in this life. Where am I going to get the money? Where am I going to get this? How can I do that? Not in this life. She said, and here's a question that really fell right down into my heart. Why not in this life? Why can we not? do the things that our hearts really want to do. Well, I've got, some, I've got some ideas for you. One of the biggest misunderstandings is thinking that the whole plan of God is just giving, forgiving our sins and letting us go to heaven. That's the biggest mistake the church has made over the generations that it's been in existence. Get saved, get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life and go to heaven. Don't worry about anything else. Just get saved, miss hell, go to heaven. Isn't that the way you've heard it before? <clears throat> Give your life to Christ. Don't live for the devil. Go to heaven and everything will be good when you get there. What happened about here? Why not now? Why not this life? Well, you see, God's plan, going to heaven is the first step. Accepting Christ is the first step. God's plan is much bigger than that, though. It's much bigger than that. It's bigger than Plymouth. It's bigger than 
uh, Lakewood Bible Church where Joel Osteen preaches. It's bigger than Old Roberts University. It's bigger than the world. You know what he's doing? He's preparing each one of us, each one of us, to be fit companions for eternity. Think about that. Nobody will be aggravated in heaven. And if you are, you won't be there anyway. God gave us his word and sent us the spirit to guide us into all truth so we could know how to live. What are you going to do when you go to that banquet dinner and there sitting before you is golden plates and golden spoon? I don't know if that's what will be there, but I'm just imagining. What would you do? Oh, wow. The Bible says that the streets of heaven are purer, not pure gold, purer than gold. Are you going to walk on them? I plan on it. I plan on fishing in the Crystal Sea. My, you know, man plans and God laughs and I can hear God going, yeah, right, Billy, you ain't even going to have time for that. But understand. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. To give you an inheritance. But you see, Somebody else doesn't have to die for us to get our inheritance. We die. But I died a long time ago. I died to sin. How about you? I said to the Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And I didn't know what I was really saying because I thought he just came into this little cavity in here and walked around in there and cleaned it out. But he came into all of me. My mind, my spirit, everything I am, God is living in me. John, chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him. Listen carefully. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him. Then Jesus said to those Plymouth people who believed him. Jesus said to those people that don't go to church every Sunday who believe in him. Does going to church make you a Christian? Thank you. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. Now, here's another verse that's misconstrued, and it says, and the truth shall set you free. That's not what the scripture says. It will make you free. How does it make you free? By from the inside out, changing you by the outside connection of the blood of Jesus Christ. Whoa. Did you ever think about that? However, and here's where I'm taking a turn. However, to enjoy this great life, one thing you must to do to experience life And this was going to be the title of this message, but I decided to make it better with the other one. But this was going to be the title of the message. Get your big butts out of the way. And I'm spelling it with one T, so don't get all frustrated and don't get upset and don't go running out of here saying Bill's swearing in church. It's not a diet and exercise sermon. It's about the way we talk to ourselves. It's the way we treat ourselves. Our attitudes and the way we have been conditioned over a lifetime to think about ourselves, the negative things people told us and we have convinced ourselves of that stuck in our conscious and subconscious forever. 
Oh, you're never going to be anything. You're never going to amount to nothing. You may as well just dig a hole and crawl in. You ever heard things like that said to you? Well, I'm going to share a personal story with you. I was somewhere around five or six years old, and I had an uncle. And he was an ornery cuss. Now, if you don't know what ornery means, you go look it up. But he would always tease me about being on the little chubby side. When a respected family member or authority figure belittles you as a five or six year old, there's something that gets stuck back here. Did you know that? And but he would always end his teasing with all oh, just kidding. It still sticks with you. This was supposed to make his orneriness acceptable. He thought it was a great joke. Needless to say, it infected me for a long time. Changed the way I looked at myself and the way I believed others saw me. But as an adult, I see it for what it is. An old man trying to be funny at the, and the center of attention at the expense of a little kid. Have you ever seen people do those things? Does it not make you want to cry or shout out? And those things stick. I'm much harder on myself now than anybody else is. And I have to remind myself sometimes. But I use this personal example to show you how deeply words can affect the, uh, how we think about ourselves. My mom used to always tell me, you're just healthy. You're big boned. Oh, really? You can see them now. <laughs> they ain't very big. It was, it was a way to make myself feel better. My mom was trying to make me feel better, but really what she was doing is she was planting the, the opposite in me. You see, words can affect the way we think about ourselves. What kind of negative stuff are you carrying around? that others have affected you with. Maybe even you affected yourself. Think about it. I mean, carefully think about it. Maybe just that one person who said that really nasty thing to you as a kid, or even as an adult, or maybe even yesterday. Think about it. Think about how those words affected you. Just for a moment, how did or does it make you feel about yourself even today? See these lies for what they truly are. And I want you to reach way back and get this, this thing. Maybe it's something your mom said jokingly. Let us make a declaration, no more. No more am I going to allow what someone thinks about me or what someone made me think about myself or even what I've con concluded in my own mind I'm thinking about myself. No more. I would like to do those things, but I wish I could, but. I have always wanted to learn to do that, but. I used to have big dreams, but. I wanted to be a millionaire, but. I wanted to be a famous person, but. You see where the title, Get Your Big Butt Out of the Way, comes from, don't you? But I don't know how. Not today. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Just. Get your big butts out of your own way. You're sabotaging yourself to live a life defeated by default. You're already defeated. It'd be like going to play a baseball game and, and before the first inning starts, the score's already 10 to nothing. That's what we do to ourselves by these preconceived notions of who we are because of somebody else who told us who we are.
You see, there's another scripture that's a little misunderstood. But it's life-changing if we understand it correctly. Just like the one we started with. Luke chapter 17, verse 6. If you have the faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you. You ever heard that verse before? And have you ever heard somebody say, where are the mulberry trees flying through the air? Where are the mountains flying through the air? I've said it. Now this next part is probably going to, is either going to make you think I'm hurting your feelings or it's going to make you think uh, the Holy Spirit's bringing conviction, okay? I always thought that this verse was about faith of a mustard seed. Listen to it. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you. Then it jumped out at me, jumped right off the page and went twack. And I went, oh. I do not think the main point was a mustard seed at all. Look at it this way. If you have faith of a mustard seed, you can say. Hmm. And it will obey you. You. You have faith. Just even a little. You can say. If I have faith, just a little, I can say. Someone asked me one time, I, I prayed for them and prayed for their healing, and you know, they kind of went, well, nothing happened. How, how can you pray for healing? If I don't say it, listen carefully, if we don't say it, it may never come to pass. Think about that. I must say it. What a game changer it is. So here's something very important in order to say you must believe. I can go around saying when I open my checking, when I look at my checking account Monday, it'll have a million dollars in it. I can say that all day long, right? But I have to have some foundation of belief. Not somebody said they're going to give me a million, but just the knowledge to know that God could, can, will, and would do that. I think I have about as much faith as anyone else does. And when sickness comes, the first place I go is not to the doctor, not to the pharmacist, not to anybody else. I go to prayer. And I declare over myself or my sick loved one or my sick friend or my sick church member or my dying church member. I declare over them the healing power of the word of God. Because if I don't say it, understand, the words we speak, Life and death. Would you rather have somebody come in when you're laying on your sick bed and lay hands on you and anoint you with oil and say, well, you're probably going to die anyway. One of the trailers that I saw this week for uh, one of the Pure Flix movies said this. The father asked the doctor how much time and I, I'll, I'll say this to any doctor, any surgeon, anybody. You don't have the right to say that. You can tell me what you think, but you can't tell me a week or a day or an hour because that's in God's hands. And when I pray, I pray and put my people in God's hands. I don't know about any of you sitting in here if you know this or not, but when I pray for you, I put you in God's hands, not mine. And you ought to take a great big sigh of relief at that point. Because if it was in my hands, no, I wouldn't. 
okay? If you have faith, what would you say? What would you say? Stella and I talk a lot about journaling. Make a journal out of what you would say. Make a journal out of what you'd say. Make a list of it. Put it on, put it on sticky notes and put it on the, the TV. Put it on the, the refrigerator. Put it on the dashboard of your car. Put it on your forehead. Put it on the mirror in the middle of the bathroom. Put it anywhere you can so when you see that declaration, you can say whatever you want to say. We had a man Thursday say, I want this gout gone. And I said, well, then declare that. See, we, we think that's all up to the preacher. We think that's all up to the religious person. Saying it is not up to them. If you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, if you have that faith, well, where do I get it? God's given every living soul a seed of faith, a measure of faith, it says. Paul's going to have open heart surgery so that it'll make his heart stronger. John had open heart surgery so it'll make your heart stronger. And when you first had the surgery, you couldn't do very much, could you? And so what did you do? You had to exercise. You had to do what was right. You had to take your meds. You had to do all of those things. But if you didn't, exercise your heart, you might not be here today. A lesson. There's a, a saying in the fitness uh, industry that says if you don't use it, you lose it. Well, that's also a saying in a religious uh, avenue. If you don't use your faith, you're going to lose it. It's going to dry up like a little pea, and when the first little wind of trouble comes along, it's going to blow right out the window. Exercise your faith by saying and declaring the things that God would say about you. Let me ask you this question. What would you say? Make a list. Speaking the truth about yourself, get your big butts out of the way and say things that God would say about you. What would God want for you? Are you a child of the Most High God? Are you? Are you? Are you a child of the Most High God? What would he not want you to have? Speak those things daily, hourly, even minute by minute. Speak the things that you know God wants for you. I come that you have life and have it abundantly. Whosoever believeth in me shall have everlasting life. If you ask, you will receive. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, it will be opened unto you. But all those things have to do with your relationship with God. How, do you, how is your relationship with God? Speak them daily. Put post-it notes everywhere. The biggest thing I can say to you is we need to get our big butts out of the way. Change the way you speak about yourself, about your life, your goals, your dreams. And then, just sit back and be surprised at what God may do. Then begin to live life each day. And not just hoping to get to heaven, but knowing that you are a child of the Most High God, and He would want you to be where He is. Right? Nothing makes me any happier than when our children are with us. What do you think God is like when his children are with him? What do you think God's doing right now over PCC? Look at my children there. I love them so. They've gathered together to honor and worship me. Faith of grain of mustard seed. 
what you say. If you have faith, what would you say? Here's what God would say about you. And I agree with him. Okay? I believe in you. I believe in your dreams. I believe in your abilities. I believe in your courage. I believe in your strength. And I believe in your life and commitment. I believe in you. How many of you ever read my email signature? I believe in you. I used to have all kinds of things in there. Years ago, I used to write personal letters to every one of our prayer warriors until it got over 500 and I quit. I used to write them personal notes and I'd tell them two things. I believe in you and I trust you. You see, listen again to what God says about you. I believe in you. I believe in your dreams. I believe in your abilities. I believe in your courage. I believe in your strength. I believe in your life. I believe in your dreams and everything that you have. I believe in your life and commitment. Isn't it time that you did? Isn't it time that you did? Like this kid, the street kid, the girl asked him, why not now? Why not in this life? If I were to give each and every one of you the opportunity to start life all over again, would you want to do that? Seriously. I mean, that's a serious question. If it, if it were possible and I could make the click and say, hey, you get to start all over again. You get to go through diaper, you know, potty training and zits and all that kind of stuff. I don't want that, but I don't want to go back over it again anyway because I'd mess up just the same. But the greatest thing is you can start over right now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not if it feels good, do it. Right now. We can all have a new beginning. The simple activity to activate the fullness of life is to get your big butt out of the way and say this. Listen carefully. Lord, please help me to walk in the way of life as you intended it to be and help me to get my butts out of the way. Oh, I do that, but I, I don't have enough time. I do that, but I'm too tired. I do that, but... I would, but I can't. My mother always, oh my goodness, what my mother said about the word can't. She said can't is a word that only a sluggard uses. Mom taught me to use the correct term there. I won't. And you don't ever say that to your mom. And a few other things you don't say. Listen again. Help me to walk the way of life as you intended it to be. Not the way you intended it to be, but the way God intended it to be. When I think about what I intended for life, I would have never met you all. I probably would have never had three, grand, three, three children and five grandchildren if life would have worked out the way I wanted it. And if life would have worked out the way you wanted it, you probably wouldn't be sitting here today. Maybe some of you would say, well, that's a good thing. Let me start over again. I want you to understand that this sermon's not only this way, but it's three of them pointing back this way. I'm not the most positive person you ever met all the time. Sometimes I let some of those old things that used to drag me down, drag me down again. Because we're in a battle, folks. This isn't a Sunday school picnic. This isn't May Day dancing around a Maypole. This isn't Christmas time excited about gifts. This is spiritual warfare, and each and every one of us 
is called to the battle. The war's already won. Now, if you want to sit back and just watch it go by, go ahead. But as for me, I want to get in there and I want to take names and all the other kind of things that go along with that. But I want to be used by God. And God said he will, if I will. Will you? Pray with me, please. Father, I want to thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the message, especially the message. And God, I pray today that you would open our hearts to your will and purpose. And God, that we would get our yabbits out of the way. And Father, we would truly learn today what you say about us is far more important than what anyone else says. And God, let us live the abundant life that Christ died to give us. And all of God's children said, if you would, please turn with me to the insert in your bulletin, and we're going to sing in Christ alone. If you can, please stand.
Father, I thank you. I ask you, God, that you would help us this week to remember and to honor and glorify you by our answering the question, yes, we will serve you. Because we love you and what you've done for us. God, let no man leave this place today the same as they entered the doors. And God, we give you the praise and the glory. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome day.